Hello, Timmy Nafso here with the Embedded Podcast at Fortis. We are filming from Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay at the Electronic Transaction Association. Enjoy the series as we interview thought leaders about all things payments. Hello, Timmy Nafso here with Embedded. We are at the ETA with Alex Teichman. Did I say Teichman. that right? Teichman. Teichman. I you think know, I've so. been practicing it. I said it four times, I think, already, and I still struggled. I apologize. Teichman, get... Teichman. 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 I mean, there's so many. <laughs> We can go so That's many awesome. ways. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, uh, Senior Vice President of Business Development and Product Strategy at Pathword. Yeah. Alex is a recognized strategist and coach known for her vision and execution in the fintech space. We'll love to hear about how you got involved in the fintech space. Oh my gosh. Alex. So I always, if people know me, they know that I call myself a card girl. I'm through and through a card, like I've been in the card space. I come from, we're at ETA, so I come from, this is my, this is my vibe right here. Um, but it wasn't intentional. I think these days people come into payments and it's very intentional. I want to monetize some platform that I have or I want to go out and build a sales engine and build an ISO. I just kind of fell into it. It wasn't intentional for me. Um, <clears throat> I started off at a card brand. I've been at two card brands since then, total, um, at a processor, um, at, a, at a fintech bank, and now I'm at Pathword. So I've kind of been across the ecosystem, but fell in, fell in love. It's one of these things I think anybody who comes into payments just kind of gets in and never leaves. It just it sucks you in, you fall in love with it. And now, you know, now I probably know too much to, <laughs> to, to talk about in one, in one session here, but it's been fun. It's been really, really fun. I'm really lucky and I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, it really is exciting. By the way, I didn't expect to be in the payment industry either and being able to have conversations with fine yeah. folks like you, which is pretty awesome yeah. to be able to do and, and learn from your experiences. Can you tell me a little bit about Pathword and what Pathword does? Yeah. So Pathword, former MetaBank. Yes. I was joking with our division president, Will Sal, and I was saying, listen, next time when we go to Money 2020 or another conference, can we please get the zip ups that say, Pathword, uh -huh. FKA, in bigger letters, MetaBank, yeah. because that's what everybody knows us as, right? We've been in the business for over 20 years. It's actually going to be 20 years in May. Yeah. Um, and we started out and probably our, our still core kind of core business is issuing credit, uh, prepaid cards, debit cards. Um, you know, and, and now we're at a place in our journey that we're an enablement bank, right? So we partner with brands, fintechs, program managers, processors. And our mandate is to enable financial inclusion for all in the market for both consumers and businesses. And we do that through our, for, through our partnerships yeah. um, kind of across the board. So awesome. we're very much a sponsor bank, partner bank, um, you know, and, and it's, been, it's been an exciting ride. I've been at Pathword for only six months now, so I'm relatively yeah. new. Um, sometimes I still say, okay, as an outsider, let me tell you what I think of Pathword. I don't think I can say that as much anymore. Um, but it really is, I think it's been this, I remember when I just joined, I used to say, Pathword is this kind of humble behemoth. It's this enormous player in our space. And they've just been so quiet and humble about it because they've got their heads down doing their good work and supporting so many use cases and so many partners here and, yeah. and kind of across the, the FinTech space. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a cool few months here. Yeah, so I mean, we've experienced you know, sponsor banks for quite some time. If you look back and what your knowledge was of sponsor banks five years ago, seven years ago, and what that environment looked like compared to what it's shifted towards today, a lot of change and shift from your perspective? So, I, I guess we're, there's so many things to say. Where yeah. do I start? Okay. So good question in that wh where was it and where is it now? I think sponsorship has always been considered, or has for a long time at least, very much been, been considered a commodity. Yeah. I remember when I was on the processor and ISO side, you know, the sponsor bank was in small, fine, fine print in the T's and C's on one of the 14 or 18 pages yeah. that were out there. <laughs> um, and it was very much an afterthought. Um, and the tech was on a forefront, whether you're at an ISO and it's the underwriting tech or the risk management tech, or what the customer experience is. And you know, it was, that was the core value proposition that was in the market. Yeah. How fast can you onboard merchants? 
Then when you kind of take a step into the fintech world, it's all about innovation, use cases. What are the different flows of funds that you can enable? Um, and it's always been very tech focused, rightfully so, because yeah. we needed innovation in our space. Um, and now you kind of look over the last 12 months maybe or so, maybe a little bit more, and you realize that there's been so much um, innovation in the space and everybody's kind of moving fast. Let's move fast and let's break things. Yeah. You're breaking my money. Yeah. You're like, yeah. you're yeah. breaking things, but at the end of the day, you're dealing with financial services and you're, de you're dealing with my ability to, to have security and stability within a FinTech product that I'm offering. So I guess my very long winded way of saying is now finally, I think folks even in, in this kind of at this conference in this space here are realizing the value of the sponsor bank yeah, and the protections that they offer, both on the issuing side and the acquiring side. Um, and then also everything that they do for the processors and the program managers and all of the managing up that they do to the regulators and making sure that we've got the right oversight in place and we have everything that needs to be kind of done in order for the end consumer to be protected and for all of the innovators to actually function well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think sponsorship is not is, is becoming more and more important yeah. in the market and now folks are picking who their sponsor is and then thinking about how to innovate and how to, how to build products. Yeah, and I know that there is this idea of the regulation and necessity of sponsors. What would the world look like without sponsors or not the world, the United States, because some parts of the world don't have a sponsor bank, right. correct? So you can go build a processor in another market and you can be a principal member of the networks and you don't need a sponsor bank, you don't need an acquiring sponsor. Um, the CFPB recently, there, there was a recent article that I read that the CFPB wants to regulate non-bank um, uh, payment organizations that process five, five million transactions or more per year. Just, so just think about that. Yeah. Think about a Fortis or anybody else that is now going to be regulated similar to that of a bank. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do, right? That's where we step in. And I think where we're able to offer the right guardrails, the right oversight. Um, and we are there to ensure that we're kind of representing those organizations that are regulators. Absolutely. Um, I, think it would be a, I think it would be a hard undertaking um, and a lot more overhead. Absolutely, absolutely. I know that for Fortis and others, the importance of the sponsor bank is so serious. I mean, this is not something to be taken lightly. Um, it is foundationally part of our business to make sure that things are moving and we're protected and the merchants and partners that we serve are protected. And I see that as Pathword's mission, so to speak, to make sure that all of those things are elegantly handled. And you know, makes it makes it y'all make it look easy, is what I understand. Correct? Elegantly handled is is the right <laughs> approach because we don't. At the end of the day, you know, I think we are very much the backbone, but we're the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. Yes. And so, as much as we want to ensure that we're all doing the right thing and it's all within the right confines of a regulatory environment, whether it's a federal or a state regulator or the networks, because yeah. they're a regulating body too. We also want to make sure that we're able to help you grow your business. Yeah. We're doing it in a sustainable way. Um, so that's all really important for us. So yeah, at the end of the day, you don't have to think about the sponsor bank when you're the end consumer. Um, and that's why our relationship ends up becoming so important, right? Whether it's with the issue, uh, an issuing program manager that we work with or with an acquiring partner that we have, awesome. uh, why those relationships are so, so important and why it has to be the right fit for us to be able to speak that language. Yeah. You touched on innovation earlier, and I want to dig into that just a little bit. Part of innovation, right, years ago, we weren't able to do things and put at the top or forefront of our mission financial inclusion, as you mentioned. If you could talk a little bit about Pathwords and the financial inclusion concept, it'd be wonderful to hear. So I'll give you my perspective Please. first, and yeah. then, so I think financial inclusion is a very loosely used term to kind of be a placeholder for a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I think at Pathword, our mandate is really to enable financial inclusion for all. So generally, when we think about financial inclusion, it's who's the underbanked, who's the unbanked. In this country, 20% of the population are underbanked. 
uh, which means that they may have a bank account, but they don't have access to credit. Yep. And you know that credit makes the world go round. It does. Whether we like it or not, especially in this country, yeah. you need to have credit worthiness in order to be able to propel yourself and move into a middle class and upper middle class environment. 5% are completely unbanked, so meaning they can't even get a bank account yeah. in this country. When we kind of pull back a little bit, it's definitely that kind of population of, of individuals that we want to be able to support. But really, our, our mandate, our, our kind of goal is to support financial inclusion for all. So you think about, for instance, Gen Z, right? And the Gen Zers and the, and the folks that are coming in, into the kind of financial ecosystem and building their um, financial health, so to speak. How do we support them? How do we yeah. enable them through our FinTech partners? What For are sure. the various tools that we're, we're able to offer them and extend to them by enabling their provider, the, the provider um, that, that is kind of the innovator, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. that's the, I think the exciting part that it's not super specific where you know, we're going after a vertical or after one market, but our focus is ensuring that we've got the agility to work with our partners and enable some of those um, value added, whether it's a value added product or service, or um, I'll give you an example. So H&R H Block is a customer of ours. If you've ever been a customer of theirs, you're able to um, set up a, an actual debit card um, with H&R with Block oh. um, and a bank account. We support them on the back end. So it's actually a card that, that, you, that, that, that that's issued by, by Password. Nice. Um, okay. I mean, another example is um, Clitter is another example yeah. where you know they enable earned wage access. So if you think about being able to pay out hourly employees, yeah. um, that's a that's a partner that you leverages Pathword on the back back end, and is able to you know pay employ pay employees um, almost in real time, whether it's same day or next day or whatever the, the scenario may be. Awesome. Um, yeah, that is that that's that's really amazing, and you bring up real time. That's uh, a, a a great segue into. It is extremely exciting to, for people to hear real time, whether that is a merchant, an individual, we have the gig economy, people want their money now. We're actually psychologically in a place, I feel like, where it's very hard for people to wait for anything. It's yep. really interesting, yep. right? It's like yep. the DoorDash era of like, deliver it to my doorstep today. Today, yeah. And Real-time payments, how do you see real-time payments and the importance that, as it evolves into further into the payments environment? So I think in a broader sense, real-time payments is, there's, a, there's, I always think about rails. I always yeah. think about utility. And what is the actual rail that we're talking about, right? Practically speaking or tangibly speaking, and then what's the utility behind it? So there's real-time payments, there's FedNow, yep. there's Visa Direct MasterCard Send, which is basically money movement via the, pay, the, the, the card rails, um, and the ability to move money instantly. Across the board, I think over these last few years, we've seen this proliferation of real-time or near real-time payments because of a Venmo or a Zelle. Yeah. So you and I as consumers use that on a regular basis, and as that adoption has grown, it's become almost a... BAU, like we yeah. want to see it in other places. Absolutely. Now we're seeing the need in with corporates, right? Yeah. Where they're looking for that perhaps in some way um, at a merchant level, or at least we're hearing that they're looking for that from the industry. I don't know, to be honest, what the adoption is going to be there for a real time payment within those use cases, but it, there's definitely been a lot of need in the market to innovate and to pay faster. Yes. Uh, when you look at other markets, right? We were talking to somebody earlier about Southeast Asia and about uh, you know, Money 2020 in Bangkok next week and the innovation that that's happened in those markets and how real-time payments is just, a, it's a standard. It's a, it's a way of, of doing business on a regular basis. It's not considered super innovative. Um, then you realize that those markets are probably a little bit more novel, that they're a little yeah. bit newer they're not nearly as mature as our financial kind of um, market is here. Um, and then the flip side of it is, you know, it's, it's how do you make sure that you have speed, but also it's safe and secure? Absolutely. So I always go Toughest back to part. that. Yeah. Um, where's the balance? Yeah. A um, little bit of friction is good in, yeah. my, in my book. Um, but, you know, it, TBD, right? It depends on yeah. who you ask. Yeah, you know, 
the joke is my emails go out 20 seconds after I hit send just because sometimes I'm like, wait, maybe I shouldn't have hit send. And there is a reality there that once that money goes, right. where is it? And, you know, you look at the card brands and on the consumer side for a merchant, there is this experience of the chargeback rules that they are favorable to us as consumers and that there's this reality of 90 days or 180 days. And there is this reality that we can lose that money. If I ship my, if I ship the jewelry from my jewelry shop and then it ends up becoming a fraudulent transaction, there was nobody there to protect me. And there is this opportunity of protection when there's just a little bit of friction. So it's interesting because in the cash world, we don't see that. But I think the largest issue of why these merchants want their money, I would assume is a cash flow situation. I would think, right, I, to, your, to your first point, I think the card rail ecosystem creates so much inherent value that we take for granted. Yes. And maybe this is my plug for my car friends at Visa MasterCard okay. and, and the other card networks now. But at the end of the day, there is an ecosystem that's been built and protections that have been enabled for both the consumer and the merchant. Absolutely. That we very much take for granted. Um, that when you think about the other payment rails, as powerful as they are, and I think they are powerful, when you send money out via an RTP rail, an RTP payment or a FedNow payment, that money is gone. Yeah. You're not getting that money back. Yeah. So you can't charge it back. Yeah. Um, so it becomes really, I think, a question, right? What is, at least from a, in within merchant use cases, do they really need an instant pay? Is that the problem you're trying to solve? Right. And I don't know if the answer is yes. You mentioned cash flow as a service. I think. Um, or cash flow, right? I think about cash flow as a service often and like how do you offer, how do you ensure that you're offering your businesses, your merchants more access to, to their receivables? How do you do yes. it faster? How do you give them a money um, a little bit easier, a little bit faster maybe? And there's a lot of products in, the, in our kind of world, right? In the FinTech world that do just that, yeah. that are able to offer and extend uh, a line of credit based on receivables that it should be coming in. Um, or there are other products that offer um, loans, small loans based on, you know, cash that should be coming in. Yeah. And they're done in you know, different ways. There's slight, slight variations across the board. But I think that's the value, right? Yeah. I mean, like my father was a, you know, had a small business. I remember growing up and I don't know if he needed the money instantly necessarily i don't think the two hours or the seven hours would have made a big difference for him but the you know the opportunity to have more access to that to to, to the money that should be coming in yep. in order for him to buy more inventory i think would have been a, you know a, exponentially more valuable absolutely absolutely yeah this this idea of frictionless experiences to generate additional cash flow or to have available uh, additional cash flow is something that is certainly important because the replacement of cash itself, w there was a generation that was used to having their cash. Like you paid me and then I paid my team member, my employee, right. and, right. Then, and then the world continued to move on. We're here at the uh, embedded you know, conference, if you will. Everything is saying embedded. <laughs> Saw you on stage, that was awesome. Um, how do you see embedded? I mean, all these things we're talking about, what is your perspective on embedded and the future of what embedded looks like? So we have the very fortunate position of being enablers at Pathword of various products and services that can be embedded at the point of customer interaction. Yeah. Um, when I think of embedded, it's a very broad term. Yes. You know, we talk about embedded banking and payments and insurance and, um, there's so much, yeah. um, and it really depends on, again, I think what problem you're trying to solve, ultimately, who your customer is, uh, who are you, and what do you offer them, and how do you, enable, how do you offer them more value, adjacent value? Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity in, in embedded payments, particularly in B2B, and in, you know, for, for businesses. That's always been my kind of sweet spot, because that's where I grew up. I grew up in a merchant world, and. My father, I mentioned, was a small business yeah. owner, and so Same. Just, yeah, I mean, it's 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 I I I do believe that there's been a lot of value and products um, created for consumers, and consumer value proposition has been, you know, uh, really 
tapped into over these last probably 10 yeah. years or so. Um, I think businesses and small merchants, medium-sized merchants have been very disenfranchised. And the technology, the innovation, the offerings have been not nearly as robust. Uh, and I, sometimes I wonder if it's because there's more consumer regs. And so I think that then when there's more regulation, then there's folks that come in and say, how do I innovate? How do I not work around the innovation, yeah. but how do I solve those problems? Because exactly. that's a problem. Whereas on a merchant side, there's not nearly as much, I think. There's some regulation, but not nearly as much as consumer protections, uh, as, as, as uh, what consumers have for their protections. And so maybe that's why there haven't been nearly as much um, innovation. Yeah. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I think the technology has certainly helped us get to a place where we, there's no way we would have been able to get there years ago. Yeah. Um, the Internet of Things concept of like connecting all dots. Uh, you know, Tesla, you, you drive your car up and like it knows your car when you plug in on the app and all of a sudden the payment is not even a thing. There's right. no exchange of payment. It just kind of happens. And I think that's really an important thing for us to start to, to witness and experience in the new world as we continue to grow. Any kind of big risks that you see with whether it's AI's involvement in the embedded uh, experience and the fraud, what is your perspective there that you're seeing from a protection perspective? I mean, we saw regulation. Re regulation exists yeah. for Yeah, it does. Reason. It does. Yeah. There's been a lot. I think there's been, it's early days yeah. and moving very, very, very quickly. Yes. Um, I think short term, even in the very short term, right, we've realized and understood. I remember I was at, we're at ETA, so I can say this, I was at an ETA <laughs> tech day yeah. uh, last October. And there was a panel discussion around AI and a gentleman that was on a panel um, said he was part of a, I guess a processor, I believe. Uh, and he goes, we've identified over 300 use cases for generative AI just within our BAU, just within our day to day, without uh -huh. even having to go and innovate and go crazy, right? Unbelievable. And so I think generally, it's a very, it's a hot topic now. Everybody's talking about it, rightfully so. AI is not a new, it's not necessarily new. I think it's about the way we're using it. And the and and in the short, medium term, I think it'll be how do we optimize what we do today? Yeah. How do we do what we do 20% more efficiently, 30% more efficiently, whether it's customer service, whether it's marketing, whether, I mean, you, you name it, right? Speed. Across the board, it's speed. It's how are we yeah. more efficient using technology? Um, I'll give you a personal example. Uh, I had to do a talk on financial inclusion and I just didn't know where to start. This was about a, maybe a year ago. And I just like, oh, I'm having a, like, where do I start? Writer's block. Writer's block. <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, all right. So I go in, I type in, in, in like Bing Copilot. Um, and at least it helped me. It got me, it, it, it gave me yeah. some, some Spark. footing. It's something. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. I think it starts or it helps you be more efficient. Um, from, you know, I, I don't know if I can speak on behalf of you know, the banking industry when it comes to this, but ultimately I think there's a lot of efficiency and it's about using it the right way. And it's, you know, I, do I think machines are gonna take over the world? And, you know, and, and I don't know, I don't think so. Uh, I believe in the people. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> I love the people, but you know, maybe I'm old school that way. What can I say? I am with you there. We, I said earlier to somebody, I'm like, you know, AI is, uh, you know, my, my uncle had became a, a dentist and for some reason, a big part of my family saw a doctor in front and they're like, hey, uh, my foot is hurting. Right. And it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just a dentist. I'm just not also, uh, you know, working right. on, you know, all parts of the body. So I think AI means so much to so many different people and is used so loosely, but certainly exciting to see speed, speed to payment, speed to revenue and the protection that companies like yours provide for the entire industry and country. Yeah. I mean, technology has always been a big part of what we use, even from a, um, from a risk standpoint, right? Yeah. There's been enough innovation done within, within Pathword, but even in a broader sense, right? Yeah. Like half of the, half of the um, booths here are around technology to, yeah. to mitigate risk, fraud, compliance focused around PCI. Yeah. And I would imagine, maybe I'm guessing here, but every single one of them uses machine learning in some capacity. I believe that. Whether it's within their organization or a vendor that they leverage or in the back of the house somewhere. Um, 
And so it's just, it's just an evolution. It's just yeah. an evolution. And I believe if they're not doing it, they're in a very dangerous place as we approach the next 24, 36, 48 months. For right. Sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Oh, it's happening so quickly. So quickly. So quickly. Yeah. Whatever happened with the internet and, you know, when, you know, I mean, it's going to be exponentially faster. Yeah. Right. And it's exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah. 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 Awesome, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today and yeah. joining the this Embedded uh, uh, podcast. Yeah. Love having you and looking yeah. forward to seeing how y'all continue to grow and uh, make the world better. Thank this you. This is awesome. Yeah. I really awesome. appreciate it. Thank you. This was fun. Awesome. It was yeah. great. Thank Thanks. You. Awesome. If you want to learn about all things ETA and all of the interviews that we have hosted, please watch the podcast Embedded on Spotify, Apple. You can also find us on YouTube and all the social channels.